Hi, and welcome to this video on Arithmetic Series, Part 2, brought to you by the Answer Series. A few quick reminders. Tn represents the value of the general term, A, the value of the first term, D, the value of the common difference, and N, the position of the term with value Tn. There are two different sum formulae for an arithmetic series. If you have the a and the n and the d value, then you use this formula. And if you don't know the d value, but you're lucky enough to know the nth term or the last term in the sequence, then this formula works very well. Pause the video if you want to process that in your own time. Example 1 asks us to determine the sum of 16 terms, given that the seventh term is 19, and the 10th term is 25. Pause this and try this question on your own, and then I will work through it with you. To do this question, you need to recognize that you have two very important pieces of information. The difference between those two terms is three positions, so three differences will equal the difference in value, so d is equal to 2. Take the 2, back to the seventh term, which you worked out at the start, substitute two in and work out that a is equal to seven. Now you have both a and d. You can substitute the a value, the n value, and the d value into the sum formula and work out that the answer is 352. Pause the video and work through this in your own time if you need another look. Example two, we are given information that we need to process before we start the question. So the sixth term is five. The seventh term is nine more than the fourth term. That's an unusual way to give the information. The sum of the first 20 terms is what we have to determine. Okay, think about the information, pause the video and try the question on your own. Now, there are longer and safer methods, but a good understanding empowers you to take safe shortcuts in this section of work. So we know the seventh term and the fourth term differ by three differences. And we know that the seventh term is nine more than the fourth term. It is very safe to write down three differences based on the difference in their position equal to nine based on the evidence we were given. And from there, we can assume that D is equal to three. Now we write up the information from the sixth term that we haven't used yet. We know that T6 is equal to A plus five D, and that the value of that term is five. So substituting three into the D will give us A equal to minus 10. Now we have the A value and the D value and they've asked us to find the sum of 20 terms. So we simply use our a, our d, and our n value. Substitute these three values into the sum formula and work out the result. Pause the video, look at the longer version of the answer, and when you're ready and you've processed all of this, we'll do the next question together. Example three is unexpected because they're asking us to work out the first three terms, which seems so trivial, and that is usually the information that we would expect them to give us. However, they are giving us the eighth term equal to 28, and rather unexpectedly, they're giving us the sum of the first 40 terms. Pause the video and try this on your own, and then I will go through the solution with you. We take each bit of information as we see it. So we know that a plus 70 is 28. That enables us to work out a value for a. Now we go to the information about the sum of 40 terms is minus 880. We substitute that information carefully into the formula and we work out that 2a plus 39d equals minus 44. We bring in the value of a that we worked out earlier and substitute into the same formula that we've just been working with, this value of a. 
So we now have only one unknown. And careful algebra will get you a result of d equal to minus 4. You take that back to the formula that you used earlier. You made a the subject. Now you substitute the minus 4 which you worked out for d. And with that you can work out that a is equal to 56. So starting with 56 as the first term, add a difference, which happens to be negative, so the terms are dropping in value, and add a difference again, and your first three terms are 56, 52, and 48. Example 4 is amazing. They are actually giving us the formula for the sum of n terms. Makes you wonder what they could possibly be asking. The first question simply asks us to work out the sum of the first 20 terms. Pause the video and try as many of these questions as you can on your own, and then I will go through them with you. The first question, if you didn't overcomplicate it, you simply needed to substitute 20 into the formula for n and work out that the sum of 20 terms is 720. The second question is a lot more complicated. Work out the value of the 20th term of the sequence. Now, we don't have a, we don't have d, and we don't have the value of a term in the sequence. So the question feels a little impossible. But if you look at the table that I've created for you, you don't create this in an exam, it takes too long, but it's critical that you understand this. So one term and s1 will always be equal. S2 will equal the sum of the first two terms. So if you're wanting to work out the second term's value, the second term is simply the difference between the sum of two terms and the sum of one term. The sum of three terms is worked out by adding term one, two, and three. So it is one term bigger than the sum of two terms. So if you want the term three value, you simply subtract and work out S3 minus S2. And this pattern continues. The sum of four terms is the sum of t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4. So t4 is the sum of the first four terms minus the sum of the first three terms. From all of this, we can assume that the nth term, any term in the sequence, is the sum of n terms minus the sum of one term less. We want to work out the value of the 20th term. We already have the sum of 20 terms. What we're going to do now is work out the sum of 19 terms by using the same formula and substituting in 19. We simply subtract and take the sum of 20 terms, subtract the sum of 19 terms, and the difference between S20 and S19 is the value of T20. This is a very popular question, so pause the video and look at it again and make sure that you understand it. Question 4.3. We've been asked now to work out the value of n values, so there could be one or two answers, given that the sum of those n terms has to be equal to 144. The question is much easier than one would expect. They've given us the formula for the sum of n terms and the result. So we simply create a standard form equation, put the equation into simplest form, factorize and solve. Do not forget to check your answers because n represents a position. It has to be a natural number or a positive integer, if you prefer. So you do need to remember to discard the value n equals minus 4. You have to put a line through the equal sign and you have to show the correct answer. So you can't skip the value that doesn't work. You need to show both answers to show that you actually know how to solve a quadratic equation. In example 5, we have to determine the largest value of n for which the sum of n terms of the series, given as minus 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5, will have a value of less than 48. So in other words, if we add those values together and as many more as we need, how many will we add all together so that they add up to a value less than 48? I want you to pause the video and try the question on your own, and then I will go through it with you. What we're going to do is use a sum formula because we need to produce a sum result less than 48. We also know that the first term is minus 1, 
the difference is two, which we find by inspection, and the overall sum result must be less than 48. So careful substitution and manipulation will get us to standard form, which means that we have a zero on the right-hand side. The inequality can be disconcerting, but these signs will not be affected unless we multiply or divide by negative. So as long as you keep your head, there's no need to be anxious about an inequality. Dividing through by two makes this easier to factorize, and our factors are n minus eight and n plus six. The product of those two values must be negative for us to be able to find a sum that is less than 48. We're going to draw on our understanding of the parabola graph, knowing that this would be a smiley parabola because the coefficient of n squared is positive. We also know that we must produce negative results. So we ignore what's happening on the far left and we ignore what's happening on the far right because they produce positive results. We focus all our attention on the minus six, not including that value because the inequality is not allowing the option of being equal. We focus on both sides, but we basically ignore what's happening with the minus six because we know we're looking for positive values of n. So the only value to consider is the eight and we're looking for the biggest possible value. So obviously we need to go to the value that is bigger and eight is the biggest possible value. But using eight would produce an outcome based on where we started of exactly 48. So we're going to choose the biggest value less than eight and that will give us our answer, which is that n is equal to seven. This question and a few others have been challenging it's worth going back to any questions you struggled with and making sure you understand them so that when you get similar questions in the future, you know exactly what to do with them. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.